Okay, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, here, I would like to uh, make my presentation uh, on drone architectures. Uh, basically, uh, I want to start with the uh, approach, what I learned and uh, what I understand. Uh, that's what the uh, uh, whole process for the my drone architecture styles. Uh, uh, in my presentation, it contains is the architecture learning, what's happening when I start practicing, my practice, reflection of architecture, looking back and experiment, some experiment work for train architecture, and then I like to conclude. Basically, when we start uh, our architecture learning, uh, we are more focused uh, with the master architect. Uh, basically, Mies, Lee Corbusier, Frank Troy, Loi Khan, uh, these are the master architect, where uh, in uh, our syllabus also we, go through all these master architect. And in the learning process and in the, our design studio, we basically practice about primary element, geometry, form, uh, intersection of form, principle of composition, modern technology, concept, case study, design process, and space. Uh, every time is changing, uh, but basically these all are the tools for the architectures. And beside that, I have some influence architect. Uh, those are the Tarando, Richard Mar, Maria Bota in my student life. Uh, so here, yeah, I would like to show some of their works and how they influence. Uh, uh, basically, Mies' uh, work uh, in plain and few form and uh, minimal form. So his work always influence us uh, in designs. So, what happened? It's not moving. Uh, so uh, uh, we can see the how the plane is used with the minimal impact uh, in the surrounding. And then uh, it's a low icon who give more primary form to the uh, and geometrical form to the architecture with the light and silent and uh, everything with the materials, material with the honest. So these all are the uh, 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 we are learning in our student life. It's the impact uh, in my design and in my learning also. So these are the form uh, when we can play with the uh, architecture in the first year or second years or maybe third years. Uh, we are playing with all these things. And Lee Corbusier also developed uh, uh, his uh, own theory about how to design the modern buildings and uh, ribbon uh, windows, uh, free column uh, spaces, uh, something uh, within the space, how the space is uh, accumulate within the geometrical form. These are the, some projects which always influence in our student life to motivate us in our designs. So uh, 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 when it comes about the Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, the contextual architecture is more important here and uh, organic uh, architecture is more developed within his uh, designs. So these all are the uh, form which reflect the geometrical uh, forms what we are practicing in our student life. And uh, th uh, these are some sketches uh, which I learned from the uh, Tara Ando, Maria Boto, and Richard Mar. They always do their sketches uh, before doing the, uh, their designs. So these are the reflections which make me uh, in my student life. Uh, when I come back in 2001, uh, the, uh, normally practicing uh, in Kathmandu train was the new classical designs. Uh, and uh, very few modern building are practicing, but Basically, the train is neoclassical design, where these uh, uh, pillars and uh, uh, it's like a train to have something similar within these buildings. So this is uh, one of the, my first work in 2080, uh, where uh, there's a neoclassical decorated buildings, and I started with simple 
that's what I learned in my uh, student life. That's a plane and line, and the, even uh, columns comes in a plane form. So uh, these are the practices I started in 2001, then in 2002. Uh, this is the one of the another renovated building where uh, some contemporary style with uh, some Nepali uh, uh, slope roof is uh, accommodated to, uh, within the modern aspects. Uh, you can see the uh, some decorative pillar here, which is actually uh, put by the client, making me actions for some time of supervision so that he can do this uh, pillar work. So it's much more interesting. Even uh, we are doing our best for what we are practicing, a client request is always there. This is one of the another project, which is finished station projects uh, where the building is already constructed, but the elevation uh, is uh, more like uh, that uh, practicing uh, train in that period, but client wants something modern and something different than what's practicing. So uh, I started here, same geometrical form with the plane and giving a new identity within that building. So it comes like this. Uh, it's uh, in 2003, it's uh, one of the public building. Uh, uh, Asok Cinema Hall is going to renovate and uh, it's a reference from my uh, first building. I got these projects and I started these projects uh, uh, where, when it was 50 years uh, after building is. So I just inserted two uh, uh, cubic form here so that I can break the train of the, uh, uh, its form and the public space area should be a bit modern and uh, uh, as a whole building itself should be uh, more traditional. So here I try to fuse between the modern and traditional architecture uh, uh, in the concept of public choices because public uh, looking this in the core area as a traditional building and uh, as a whole building itself should be traditional. Whereas for the young people, young generation, the modern identity is important. That's why in eye level, I put the modern to cubic form, uh, painted the building so that it can be seen as a uh, uh, some impact in all buildings. Here, uh, uh, the building itself is in a uh, two form, modern and traditional. So it's a fusion between the modern and traditional architectures and our practice uh, we are doing in the studio is more about the uh, form and how it can be used uh, in different way. But at the time, it's very hard to motivate all the clients. So the result we can see here is uh, one is the studio model where we try to uh, uh, make more geometrical and more modern form uh, within the, its own identity. However, when we are implementing, it's a change, change in the proportions, change in the shape, and it's a totally different buildings. Um, but sometimes we got a chance to implement what we think of. So this is the one of the building many knows, it's behind the KC uh, College. So it's a residential building, which is in very small area with a triangular uh, site. So here I play with the plane so that the uh, inside the space is more comfortable and more rectangular form and outside the negative is, space is totally coming outside the buildings with given a new dimension of the form. And this is one other building where uh, uh, my idea is implemented uh, in, uh, uh, because it's the construction is a little bit harder because the circle itself is a 26 feet dia and it's a huge circle. Uh, within the building. Conceptually, uh, I, I thought in this uh, project was, uh, this is in the core area of Puka, Dune Road. So in core area, the modernism is penetrated uh, uh, in that area. So the circle is painted by a <clears throat> line, which is uh, shown here, representing that the core area is not no more uh, uh, core as an architecture part. It is more about the modernism. Uh, beside these things, I am also practicing some traditional uh, work uh, while I am main focus is in modern uh, approach, but sometimes client need some traditional building and I'm recreating traditional identity within it. Uh, this is a one building which is uh, renovated from uh, office building. 
and it's a public building. So here also, uh, there is a public, there is a modernism, there is a space so that uh, people can enjoy it. It's a restaurant, so it's a uh, people of different uh, uh, ideas may come here, but the idea is to make it simple, modern, and spacious. Same uh, geometrical form is, uh, I am trying to repeatedly using it with uh, some new concept, new ideas uh, within the building. So it's a core plane or a circular form or cubic form. It's a paint writing each other and making a new form within it. Here, uh, this building is a, a contemporary architecture style, client want to uh, make more new classical design, but I try to motivate him and putting some modern and some uh, traditional identity within it so that it's less neoclassical and a bit more contemporary and Nepalese architecture. Uh, this is a, one of another opportunity where I get to work in minimal uh, style with a minimum things so that it can be explored within it. Uh, in, that co in this uh, area, uh, most of the building are in the same format, like neoclassical with a uh, decorative pillar. So uh, when I uh, uh, finished this project, it's looked totally different than the surroundings and it got its own identity and it's uh, like a landmark in this area. And uh, another, uh, this is a simple plain building with the uh, uh, curb line because the client want to make me a circular staircase. And uh, when I start a circular staircase, it should be uh, with the curb line. Uh, so the curb line should be uh, somehow comes outside the buildings. That's why the building itself comes uh, with the circular uh, plane within the box volume. Uh, then slowly I starting uh, to play with the uh, box and volume, uh, twisting the building itself so that it can create the uh, some attraction uh, within the form. So in this building, the interesting part of the, this building is actually the building is twisted by uh, below, not from the up. But visually it looks like the upper part is twisting and the lower part is the base. So uh, playing with the line and plane and the form, you can create a lot of the designs in the modernism. And this is the basic things uh, when uh, we are a student, we are talking about all these things and globally it's a practicing and even educations globally, uh, we started with the point line and uh, form, and uh, we practice all this in our education life. Uh, luckily, I got a uh, chance to uh, redesign again uh, the restaurants. The lower restaurants is now the Alice restaurants. And here, what I added is that uh, it was before it was outer space, now it's an inside space. But uh, uh, most of the people may visit Alice. Within the outs, uh, it's a cover. Uh, I put the courtyard so that it's uh, still outside within the building. And I tried some more line and some more plane. Some are uh, structurally and some are decoratively. And, uh, this is one of the uh, commercial uh, building in uh, Kalimati, uh, where I played with the, again, with the plane, uh, making some abstract uh, form of uh, plane in uh, art compositions so that uh, uh, it can create the a different identity within that uh, line, the lane of the Kalimati, because the Kalimati have different kind of buildings and it creates its own identity. So I played with the, a little bit color so that it can focus the, the building and uh, it uh, goes in up in a terrace with the line, creating the space within that uh, lines. Uh, so I'm so much uh, uh, practicing in modern architecture uh, so that uh, uh, even in temple also, I tried uh, modern uh, buildings in a temple here and even in a civil complex in Salty here more, I uh, did uh, modern temples rather than the traditionals. But uh, in some places where the uh, traditional valley is more important, like core area in the left side, there is a, uh, it's a, uh, in Indra Chok, uh, and in right side is a, uh, opposite to Peanuts building. This area are more core area. And uh, up to that period, 2011 and 12, I have some uh, uh, inner side of the traditional architecture that I have to do something 
similar as in uh, core area. So that here in Vira complex, I was just opposite of it. And here I did uh, uh, traditional building within the modern uh, uh, building so that it has its own social values and it merged with the landmark of that core areas. And uh, this is another building, uh, which is a renovation projects. And uh, in this project also, I try to uh, blend uh, all in modern, however, uh, some part of it, it's uh, come in the, uh, there is a, a one courtyard in the, uh, uh, First, first, second, third floor. Uh, there is a courtyard, and uh, I start uh, something trying within uh, traditional architecture within the building in this uh, hospital also. Uh, uh, within that period, actually from 2011, when I finished my uh, uh, master's uh, uh, in urban planning, I start traveling in different countries. Basically, if I have to name Bhutan, Vietnam, Indonesia, United Kingdom, and Japan, uh, where uh, I uh, realized that architecture also represents by its traditional value. Modern life of building is very short and it goes with time, while traditional building always connect with your past. So this, this is very important uh, lesson for me and realization for me uh, uh, where my approach towards the building slowly getting something uh, different than what I am practicing. Uh, it is not that I am not influenced with my own country architecture before also, but I never thought about architecture development and why its development is stopped because our traditional architecture is, is uh, just stopped after the modernization period and uh, modern buildings uh, coming up uh, in that period. So uh, after our graduations, uh, I uh, practiced in KBPT and in Garden of Dreams with uh, Eric, uh, Dr. Roit and uh, architect Gauz Agmuller. Uh, with those buildings where I learned about the traditional architecture, about the neoclassical architecture and uh, architecture practicing. Then after what I did was recreation of similar traditional building when I got uh, uh, opportunity with client interest in traditional building. Uh, otherwise I tried to motivate my client to do modern buildings because a modern uh, was passion in my uh, you know, that particular decade. Then uh, after visiting uh, those country, I realized that the identity of architecture is very important part in the visual expressions. And I was never taught in my study that we can adapt or design contextual, contextual building, which is identity of social and cultural aspects. Uh, and I never practiced in that way till my realizations. Yes, I did some traditional building and social context, but those were ideas, something comes from my inner heart rather than uh, I have to do traditional building. Then I started uh, looking back to history of uh, Nepal, uh, where modern uh, architecture and found some good buildings, which is more contextual and give a sense of Nepali identity. Contemporary architecture, most of building is done by foreign architect. Some building uh, from Nepal architect like Bibhuti Sar and Sankarna Trima so also practice, which building expression is more with Nepal identity. Here, uh, I would like to repeat uh, the word of architect Biresa. Uh, their architecture evolved from their personal experience of the valley as they put to use their training in the Western universities and realizing their specific architecture ideas. Some by the restoration here, they develop design ideas rooted in the context rather than promoting stereotypes from their countries of origin, which is true for me also. So uh, uh, these are some buildings we, uh, which I found more uh, Nepalese uh, contemporary style or Nepali uh, identity buildings like uh, Elo Pagoda buildings, it's a Hotel Annapurna and uh, Hotel Mala. And uh, uh, it's a Fistel uh, Lodge in Pokhara and it's a SOS building, uh, SOS village uh, at San Timi. And uh, this is uh, done by Benz, I mean, uh, Pork, uh, which is uh, our uh, museum now. It's a palace building. And uh, this is done by the Chinese government. Uh, there is a controversy still, it's look some Nepali identity. So uh, uh, here the reflection of architecture is uh, very important. So uh, I uh, making question myself that what we practice and what we don't practice. Interesting architecture recreating, recreating is not only answers. Should you evolve 
what you study and what it is is the uh, biggest thing in my mind. So uh, after that, uh, what I did is uh, I uh, make a list uh, what makes Billing Express is identity with people who live there. So uh, I listed here eight points, basically contextual, billing material, billing form, art and craft, identity of past and present, transformation of form and material, definition and adaptation and history of building itself. So uh, what I'm practicing almost from six, seven years uh, in my latter part uh, is to develop uh, without losing its essence uh, for the traditional architecture, which math maths with the timeline. So what is contextual? Contextual uh, uh, is the, here is the, some Nepalese uh, building is more contextual and more uh, practicing in our traditional architectures. And uh, these are the, some building materials, which is more con uh, contextual also and building materials available uh, within the uh, site. So uh, some are the uh, stones and some are the bricks and uh, some are wood, which is more comfort in visual aspects also. And it gives identity also. Uh, so uh, third form is the uh, built form. Uh, if uh, we see in the Nepal, where the built form can be found in Nepalese architecture, the most recognized one is slope roof on the top. However, it may vary due to environment impact of building style. So uh, uh, it's uh, if we check out in a religious uh, part of the building, it's, uh, there are a lot of different aspects and within the residence also uh, in the Himalaya region, it's a flat roof in most of the Tarai and uh, Kathmandu Valley, we have a slope roof. So the build form is different, but however, slope roof is one of the identity part. And uh, beside that also, uh, fourth is art and craft, where art and craft always uh, give your own identity, own culture, social aspect. So these are the, uh, some important identity uh, for the buildings. Beside that also, identity of past and present, transmission of form and materials, definition of adaptations, what we adapt as a Nepalese architecture, that's very important part and uh, history of the building itself. And uh, looking back to the traditional architecture in your uh, early building here, uh, we can see that in modern architecture, we learn about how the, uh, it's very hard to break the traditional uh, building or uh, old buildings. Uh, when it's come about the modern buildings, uh, the uh, corner part is, uh, is the most important part to put the windows. So uh, if we go back to the uh, our building in 50 years back, there is a uh, window in a corner parts and there is a uh, window in a different functional aspect and the size is different according to the functions. And uh, even curtain uh, window is used from first ground floor to uh, second floor. It's, uh, and uh, uh, we talk about this same thing in the modern architectures. And uh, when something uh, comes from the outside, like uh, after the uh, Jangabad coming back from the London's uh, British architectures and the new classical architectures is introduced in Nepal. But however, it merged with the Nepali styles and there is a no complaint and it itself is a Nepalese architectures. And beside that, if uh, we look uh, back to the traditional architecture, the, uh, the wall is very plain and we have a, a very a good art and craft within the wall as a showpiece of the things. So here uh, uh, I learned all these traditions uh, aspect of the things. And the good part is that uh, uh, I have done JP Complex uh, design in 2010 and I got the review uh, uh, chance for this building because the function of the top floor is changed to the hotels. Then uh, I changed this uh, building to the more traditional aspect uh, rather than the totally modern aspects. So here I tried something more traditional uh, impact within the building and it got changes and I'm satisfied what the result is. Uh, and I got some Nepali texture within the, this JP complex building. And these are uh, some other buildings where uh, in, even in modern building, I try to put the materials. I try to put the materials uh, stones uh, so that it makes some sense uh, of uh, building material uh, to, uh, honest with the uh, traditional part of it. So, Sorry. And uh, another part, uh, another building is a Nova boutique hotel, which is uh, more traditional within uh, uh, there are also some modern parties. 
mix uh, with the volume of traditionals. And uh, here is one another innovation building I have done in China, uh, near to the border of Nepal, which is a simple modern buildings. And I try to uh, change the buildings with the contextual aspect. And uh, I put some stone wall and uh, some traditional type of balcony to change the facade and change the expression of this building. Uh, besides that, uh, uh, I cannot uh, develop the patterns. I just uh, putting the materials and putting uh, similar kind of traditional things. Uh, just I try to change the uh, concept of why not a plain wall and there's some art within the, that wall. So I uh, developed a pattern and I tried in my modern uh, buildings to put those patterns so that maybe this uh, is the what the development form of the uh, traditional architecture to the modern form. So I tried one this recent building and another this uh, building uh, where the similar pattern uh, uh, in this uh, wall is developed. Uh, beside that, uh, uh, I tried uh, in this building a uh, surprise courtyard of traditional uh, element so that uh, when uh, uh, the client uh, have a guest, they can have a surprise courtyard inside the buildings with traditional element and a traditional value of social and cultural aspects also. Uh, uh, working uh, uh, in the expression of architecture, I also uh, trying to use some of its uh, pattern development inside the buildings. And uh, I tried these uh, with some modern elements and some traditional elements like Ostamangal in right side and uh, left, I developed a pattern which can be created uh, in a traditional way uh, to the modern way. Uh, here is the another resistance uh, building uh, in which uh, material itself and uh, form itself uh, is more uh, with traditional practice. And I tried something uh, uh, important, uh, something uh, uh, the client one as a modernism to the entrances and uh, rest of the building itself a traditional building. So it's trying to uh, uh, merge the traditional part and the modern part itself within the building. And, and uh, when you know, we started with a traditional form, it's uh, very hard to uh, penetrate the new things. So here I tried just to uh, have some modern elements within the traditional building and it's a very hard job uh, uh, to do this because uh, in traditional, they have own identity, own patterns, but still I tried to penetrate one of the modern form within, uh, you can see in the left side of the building with that corner window. And uh, th uh, these are, uh, some more photos. We have a courtyard, we have a axis, we have a city within that buildings. And uh, uh, even I tried uh, some modern patterns in traditional door so that it uh, give a uh, both mixture of modernism and traditionalism. Uh, and even in a modern uh, roof, I put the mandalas uh, uh, with the axis of the door and the door just open in the axis uh, of the city. Uh, besides that, in some modern building, uh, here I tried uh, about the building material to put it like uh, in the commercial building also. I tried to uh, put traditional uh, or original materials uh, stone here so that it can create some sense of uh, impact that these are the Nepalese uh, work or these are the Nepalese uh, materials uh, which uh, we can see in our Himalayans. And uh, even in the school building, uh, I tried uh, some stones brick work and uh, preferable rather than the just plaster works. And I tried this uh, uh, building. Uh, this is one another building now on constructions, uh, which uh, is very hard for me because the client one almost uh, no window in, uh, in the uh, front face, uh, so it's a uh, uh, almost closed area. I put a small uh, opening, uh, you can see in the blue mark, uh, which is uh, creating the light and ventilation is from the north and south. This is the facade. Uh, and there's only one window, which is in the, at the lounge. Uh, but uh, uh, trying to make some traditional uh, uh, things in, in this building, it's very hard to put uh, this window uh, in this form. Uh, but uh, when I uh, doing the landscape, I uh, did the double E, uh, in the axis of the window, then I can finalize, okay, that window is going to, 
uh, with the uh, axis of the double and it merges uh, each other so that I can put this uh, window in this uh, uh, building. And uh, I tried some uh, tra uh, traditional part within this modernism, modern building. <clears throat> Another opportunity uh, I got uh, is in the competitions of the uh, yet GI building where uh, uh, we tried, uh, we have a time, we have a concept and we can work in a tr uh, basically traditional and modern uh, combined form. So uh, this is Trillian architecture uh, as an approach and it may be one of the solutions for the uh, uh, development of our traditional building within this time. So uh, this is one of the uh, good opportunity for us in the competitions. Uh, so, uh, uh, doing all this, you know, we uh, in uh, study of history modernism, we rejected uh, as unsuitable to represent to use in national identity purpose. Mainly, when uh, it comes for state architecture, uh, so we need to look back in history where and what represent national identity or contextual, so that building can communicate with us about its place, social aspect, and culture. And I think it is time to tune for it. Making fusion between any style of architecture with traditional architecture is the easiest way for the expressions. Uh, understanding traditional architecture and adding new element in respect to traditional practice, we need to a lot of study, principle, discussion, criticism, and adoption so that we can create a develop uh, uh, of our traditional architecture in this modern time. Then we can have new style of practice, which here I name as traditional architecture. Lastly, I started thinking, practicing building as a, an experimental, whether the result express as entity or not. The important part of this process is exercising it so that one day we definitely have trillion architecture as one new style of to practice. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, uh, that was indeed very interesting and it somehow made me look architecture in a new perspective. And I'm sure you have influenced many of us and more curious to learn about it as well. Uh, we will go ahead and take some questions for now. Uh, so we have a questions. In the later part of your practice, you mainly focused on fusing simple modern with traditional touch, but you designed two zigzag or deconstructive style in initial period. Do you regret practicing those styles? Yeah, actually, sometimes I regret uh, doing those parts, but uh, the good part is that even in my uh, last projects, it's a totally modern buildings and I'm trying to put a traditional part on it because uh, we have to develop a certain uh, uh, our identity in Nepalese architecture so that we can call it as a Nepalese architecture development. Because uh, once upon a time, we go back to the 350 years, uh, the architecture was in heights, but it's totally stopped. So it's a, again a, our a time to recall those things and we start those practices. Even maybe sometimes uh, after in deconstructivism also, we can add personal architectures. That may be the practice we should start now. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have another question. How do you develop a concept for a given project? and apply the concept to each project and stick with it till the end. And can you can we use traditional element with traditional and, and can we use the traditional elements? Yes, the important uh, of the concept is that concept is the guidelines for your projects. So it should be uh, till end. So what your concept is, what your guidelines uh, for the expression of the building or for, for the style of the building and the functions and other part is your duty to do it. So it's a two different part. If you have the guidelines, you are going to same uh, line. If you don't have a guidelines, uh, you may have a number of alternatives. So it's important to have a concept. Once you have a concept, you can go uh, to the end. Concept is not just to make a form or to uh, define the project in the initial phase. Con concept is uh, like objective, you have to fulfill it. So th that's a part. And about the traditional uh, part, it comes uh, with the choice, it comes with the context uh, contextual things, it comes with the culture, it comes with the social things. And sometimes it co comes with art and crafts also, uh, so that I have uh, defined in my presentation also. So 
uh, when uh, you are uh, uh, doing the concept, it's about the gu guidelines only. It's not about the style. It's not about the uh, other part of the uh, things like building material. It, the concept doesn't guide the building materials until and unless if the concept is uh, honest to the materials. If it's honest to the materials, uh, is your style of doing the work like uh, Luaikana did, then maybe there's a problem. Otherwise, there's no problem. You can go with a concept to the end, adding traditional elements also. Okay, sir. Uh, how easy or hard is it to convince the client with new concepts of architecture, structure, and form, which are new to our society and practice? Uh, clients, clients are always different. It's not that uh, uh, some clients are so good, uh, they listen to you, and some clients are uh, not listening to you. So it's about the uh, how to put the things. It's like a marketing. How to put the things? Why it is important? If you are uh, trying to sell the things, uh, because our uh, we have to sell our ideas. Like uh, in the context of uh, Indrachok uh, projects, the client was totally modern buildings. But I said that uh, the uh, contextual impact of that modern building will be very negative. So that uh, uh, most of the neighborhood will blame you. Uh, and it's not good. And it may be a headache for every time when you uh, see your own buildings. So it's better let's merge with the area. And uh, actually it happens also. Once the building is finished, so many people appreciate him for that building. And he was very happy. So yes, uh, we can go uh, and we can deal with the client, but it's a very uh, important to prepare yourself how to deal with the client. Maybe I, I answer your questions. Yes, it is more like you have to be confident of your ideas and design. Yeah. Uh, so there is another question. You designed Vira complex in the heart of traditional city and JP complex, which gained more controversies in land use and bylaws. How do you view those things? Yeah, when I'm doing Vira complex, I even uh, my first uh, design was different than that one. Uh, in one phase, it's a uh, that's actually uh, I uh, make a representation of what's going thing, going in wrong directions most probably in that period because you know another facade if we, uh, you uh, saw the facades there is a geometrical error uh, and I did it uh, understanding that this building or this location is itself the error things and there is a uh, if you uh, if you have seen the Bira complex, Bira complex nearby there is a one uh, small stupa uh, and uh, open space. Uh, so uh, I represent this is like uh, penetrating the core area with the modern things. That's why it uh, comes like that way. Uh, because the client, uh, it's a commercial building and client one uh, to have a modern buildings. And at the time, of course, I am also practicing modern design. When it's coming about the JP uh, buildings. Uh, uh, I uh, first design, design was the modern buildings, but uh, when I uh, realizing all these things, uh, then I got uh, again chance to redesign it. And uh, at that period also, uh, there is a starting of traditional building within the Tamil area also. If you notice, there are so many buildings now uh, uh, in traditional practices in Tamil area rather than the modern practices. And it's uh, much uh, easier for me to convince my client and. Uh, hotel is added. That's why it's uh, very important. Actually, there is a, inside there is a traditional courtyard also in within that uh, JP complex, which is uh, much more focused to the uh, hotel. So it is accepted easily. Okay, uh, this is a very fun question. Today, if you have to advise, suggest twenty-year-old Prajal Harda, who is planning to study architecture, what would that be? Uh, Actually, I don't know uh, because uh, uh, when I went to the uh, to study architecture, I'm I'm trying to to only study in architecture, not in, even in civil, because my name was published in civil list actually, and I said uh, to the dean that uh, if I got the architecture, then only I study here because civil is 
in my country. I can study in own country, but architecture is not there. That, that's why I'm here. So he admitted uh, me directly uh, without uh, aptitude test and without medical test. So that was the case when I start my architecture practice. And now I, I am counseling some of the uh, young students who is in uh, 11 and 12. I'm uh, telling them to study in Nepal, not go outside because in Nepal, you can study about the Nepalese architecture. You can study about the uh, contextual things and what is happening. That's a very important part uh, of your practices. Now, if you want to study outside and you work outside, it's okay. Otherwise, if you want to uh, work in Nepal, you have to study in Nepal because architecture is not only about the technology, it's about the social value, it's about the culture, it's about the peoples. Uh, and without peoples, you cannot do architecture. And without culture, you cannot know what architecture really is. That's what I like to suggest, maybe for myself and maybe for the new students who are joining in Nepalese architects. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, there is another question. Uh, it seems Tredin architecture is not only using traditional building materials and elements in modern building. Have you thought of including traditional values of building materials, symbols, and elements in modern architecture? and also understanding and implementation and incorporation of traditional values for spaces, traditional construction technologies, and beliefs on space elements and architectural component in the modern design. Uh, yes, uh, traditional uh, value, it's not come only the expressions, it comes in everywhere actually. Uh, here, uh, I try to uh, define in, uh, Facade totally in elevation or expression way only, but uh, it's not limited uh, to the building identity. It's uh, you can go uh, with totally uh, uh, what's the traditional is and what's the modern is and where we can add it both uh, by understanding. So uh, even I wrote about all this part uh, that uh, it comes uh, inside the building also. It's not uh, coming outside because even uh, I, I saw. Uh, one slide for the interior part. It's come inside the buildings. It's coming about the space. It's coming about the technology also. But however, about technology, the time period and uh, uh, may not match with the old uh, uh, brick facade, uh, uh, sorry, old brick uh, mortar uh, structure building because time is changed now and you can have more beneficial if you go to the honor technology where the structure matters. But the, where the expression, where the building materials, where the space, where the culture, you can add anything. Because if you go back to the uh, our traditional building development in Rana period, uh, it's changes. It's a lot of changes. Material is changes, roof is changed, uh, uh, flat roof is developed. But it's still the essence of that traditional architecture not gone on that period. But when moderns comes uh, as a technically or uh, or as a space, the total uh, we got, uh, uh, we lost the value of the, that buildings as a traditional. Even after earthquakes in 2015, we can see a lot of building comes in the villages, which since is totally lost, just because uh, we, we didn't use the uh, uh, real type of materials or real type of space within that uh, construction period. Everything is new and everything is different than what really is. And the essence of space, essence of using the people, even identity is lost. Lost of uh, even the village identity is lost. So we can compare how it comes uh, with small things or how it comes even in big things. But yes, we can use everywhere. Um, how does the concept of green and sustainability come into your design to date? Or is it overlooked by the design intricacies? Uh, uh, sustainability uh, is a fake uh, terms nowadays because uh, there is a uh, one part we calculate about the energy, another part we calculate uh, about uh, how the uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide part, and uh, uh, another part we calculate about the uh, different, actually in different level. But if we go back to the uh, our traditional period, all building are sustainable. Uh, yes or no? Yes. For me, it's yes because uh, it uh, it is 
uh, defined as the environment, it is defined as the energy, it is it uh, is more comfortable than today. Uh, so what is the difference is about the environment, what you create. If you create the same environment, same airflow, uh, where the uh, windows need more opening, you can use more opening uh, so that sun can penetrate the things and uh, where to stop, you have to small window. All these are also sustainable things. It's not uh, about only uh, technical aspects. It's about the reuse of the building. If the uh, brick is more re reusable than uh, concrete, so it's a big facade is more uh, appropriate. But yes, if we talk about the carbon dioxide, maybe some other materials comes. Uh, so how much you want to do it? Uh, uh, you have to put small things or you, you talk about the big things and you talk about the energy or you talk about the climates and how you uh, make a balance. For me, uh, balancing itself is the use of comfort building if the building itself work for the uh, without uh, uh, air conditioning, it's uh, more sustainable. Uh, without heater, it's more sustainable. Without airflow, sorry, uh, with uh, proper airflow and healthy and light building, it's uh, more sustainable. That's what I practice. Uh, even sometimes I'm doing when I uh, did one of the uh, renovation building, it's uh, actually it's on construction phase and the toilet and the dressing room is totally dark room, totally dark room. Uh, and what I did is I provided even sunlight in that rooms. That's what good for me, that every room should be lighted, every room should be uh, uh, sun at least painted once a day in that room. So it is more healthy, more sustainable buildings for me. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you think of the new design practices happening in the Valley, particularly Okay, uh, it was like, uh, what do you think about the new practices in the valley? So uh, that question is, I think it's already uh, answered early. in a, so in yeah. a short time you. Uh, it's a now train of the box or modern practices uh, mm -hmm. in the valley and even uh, wherever you go, you can see the box designs. It's a good, it's not, I don't say that it's a bad because we are, uh, as in, I am in a uh, uh, teaching professional, we are teaching same things. Rather than, uh, why not we are teaching the traditional uh, architecture blend with the modern architecture? That's where my point is also. Uh, because we are not teaching in that way that modern building can be a traditional, more, more uh, uh, with the contextual things. Rather than what we did in the studio, what we studied uh, in our uh, education life uh, that we are implementing. We are not teaching uh, to merge traditional and modern building in our uh, education line. So th that's where the problem lies actually, Brian, uh, what's happening outside the, uh, in our city. So we need to change at the best point of our educations and practices, I think, then maybe uh, we can create similar kind of uh, architecture practice in all around the uh, city, all, uh, all around the country, uh, because if we go back to the, uh, before modern uh, period, technology is always merged with the new things also. But now uh, it's totally changed because the communications, because the facilities, because the uh, uh, access of uh, different materials is available nowadays. And sometimes even client demands a lot than before. So uh, there's always variable and variable is also good, but within the variable, if there is something uh, united, it will be the best thing we have in our future. Okay. What is your favorite building till now? One by yourself, one by any other Nepalese architect? Uh, it's a very hard question for me. Uh, I never, I uh, think in that way that which one is my, uh, because uh, whenever I did uh, my building, uh, I do all the part of the buildings from uh, design to landscape and uh, interior and everything. Uh, so every building is equal for me. Maybe when I found out totally what the traditional building and Italian architectures within 
uh, all the solutions and all the theory, maybe that will be the best one, or I don't know, maybe never uh, it happens. But for me, it's all equal. And I enjoy all my projects, basically where I supervise, where I did interior and it merged with all the things. It's not only the architecture, if you did the building and it's finished and uh, another uh, team goes and change the total uh, aspect of building by interior, then it may not go sometimes right in the expressions. And for me, uh, uh, it's a Nepalese architect or outside uh, the country? Uh, it's uh, from Nepal, Nepalese Nepal. architect, yeah. I never thought in that way. Actually, I'm looking back in the history, not what's happening nowadays. Uh, uh, it's rather yeah. very hard to choose one, actually, because there yeah, are yeah. many good and, uh, yeah. uh, I visit very less uh, to the honor of buildings. And it's very hard. But maybe I think I, <laughs> I will try to and answer this in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you have been teaching in various colleges. How do your students take to the change in the direction of your approach to architectural solutions? Are they willing to forget modern and believe in substance of this new fusion? Uh, I don't think so because uh, when our teaching, uh, teaching partner is started with the point, line and plane and bottom, it will never change. Uh, we have to change in that part of the things and maybe we have to change the syllabus we uh, uh, started with the space, we started with the people, we started with the building material, with the contextual availability of the building material. Then maybe we start changing in a uh, direction of thinking process. Otherwise, while we are teaching global architecture first and global importance and iconic building and uh, uh, identity of the uh, iconic building with the modernity, we cannot change the patterns. But, but yes, we can influence some of the students because I'm teaching conservation also. I said to my student that conservation, at least uh, from the class, only five or 10 persons uh, added to conservation architect, it will be good enough to protect our conservation. So it's uh, like same things. Uh, we cannot change the uh, modernism practices until and uh, unless we change the pattern of uh, teaching process. Otherwise, Yes, if teaching process is changed, then we think more about the contextual, we think more about the space, we think more about the people rather than the materials and form of the building. Okay, uh, so how do you define traditional? Uh, the tradition is also from the Malla time and also through the Rana regime. In your work, will we get a chance to see a combination of neoclassical or Persian and modern architecture in the future? Classical, I don't know. Uh, maybe modern architecture, yes, of course, I am trying to fuse both of the traditional and modern. So maybe more, there is a modern building and, yeah, uh, and within that modern building, there is a, some cultural aspect as I define eight points uh, for now, which is maybe anyone can criticize or anyone can discuss on it. Uh, otherwise, of course, there will be a modern building and uh, there will be traditional on it or there is a terrain architectures uh, uh, on it, uh, but uh, no classical uh, design will be there. And what's another one question? I missed uh, the one so question. Persian style of architecture. He just wants to know if you are only into the Malla style of architecture or you are also into the Rana style of architecture and any other traditional style. No, no. Uh, I'm trying to develop a theory to adapt the traditional architecture in uh, modern times. So uh, if uh, Rana is tra traditional architecture for some uh, people, they can start in that way also, which is somewhere a British uh, part when modernism falls to identify the building as a national building. It's a postmodernism is developed in that way so that it can add the uh, uh, pillars and neoclassical part of it. So postmodernism develops. So it's a happens, it's a process. Uh, uh, when uh, 
uh, time changes or some requirements, some people start changes, it happens. Uh, but uh, there's some questions, most probably, what is traditional things? Yes, sir. Yeah. What is uh, traditional to you? Uh, traditional uh, to me is more related to, uh, with the past, more related with the culture, and uh, more related to, uh, uh, with what uh, you are from your past, what you uh, used in the past, uh, your father, your forefather, using it as a, it comes as a culture. Uh, so uh, building, within the building also, it comes with the cultures because we are changing our facilities, we are changing uh, our life, but some part it remains. That's what the traditional part is. Uh, because uh, uh, still uh, our children learns a uh, lot of cultural aspect of the uh, our cult uh, culture and our uh, society. So this remains, that's what the traditional is. And within the building also, I think these are some traditional parts of it. Uh, so we have a lot more questions going on. Uh, the traditionality of certain building is not only represented in the material of the building. How do we combine the traditional spaces with the contemporary spaces for better trend in architecture? Uh, it's, uh, uh, there is one project uh, when uh, we have to do some modern things. Uh, uh, what they did is uh, they started uh, making a 3D and uh, um, uh, socializing their 3D as a uh, part of culture. And they added people every time. And uh, once the, that building is ready, most of the people know that buildings. Uh, and it goes like, it's already seen part of the building. It's not a new building. Uh, so it's always about how uh, we make the things more comfortable and more uh, in the mind of the uh, peoples. So it's very important when we are talking about the traditional things, because uh, uh, what we uh, want to see in traditional thing is that something we know, something that does my heart, something uh, that uh, represent you within that buildings. So uh, if uh, uh, we uh, just make an advertisement of something regularly making all the uh, thing happens. It's like, I know the things. It's like, I, uh, it's some, uh, somewhere I read it with that uh, material or with that buildings, uh, it goes in that way. So it's uh, important to making some marketing also when we are doing architecture in community based part, basically, uh, if it's a public part, because you have to think of the public. When it's a private building, when it's iconic building, or when it's a national, uh, building or when it's a mass building, then the idea may go differently again. So it's very important to understand what the product is and for whom the product is. And it goes in that way, I think. I think I, I have answered that. Uh. Yeah. Um, in traditional architecture, human comfort and right and proper use of space is most valued and used. Should we implement uh, yeah. should we implement in Treden architecture too? Then it's not only the look of building contributing in Treden architecture, but also the knowledge of our ancestor regarding architecture, system like insulation, water flow, drainage, natural light, privacy will be incorporated. What do you, what do you think, sir? So the last part is not listened, sounds not coming. Uh, so then it's not only the look of the building, mm -hmm. contributing in trading architecture, but also the knowledge of our ancestor regarding architecture, system like insulation, water flow, drainage, natural light, privacy will be incorporated. Uh, what do you think? Yes, it's, it's very important to know the essence uh, of the uh, uh, materials itself, essence of the technology, uh, we are trying to know all the uh, uh, technical part of the uh, these windows and other parts also. And uh, uh, another part is the uh, important part is the changes. Because uh, I'm talking about the traditional and modern, what the lifestyle changes. Uh, because uh, before it was a very closed uh, uh, buildings. So the uh, kitchen is on the top floor. 
uh, and uh, uh, bottom uh, uh, or ground floor is more open to the community level. And first floor is the living level where the privacy is very important. So the windows are small. And uh, uh, in second floor, there's a projected window because this is a part from where people sit and look outside the buildings. So these are the correlations practices in that old period. But now the time is different. We cannot make same uh, functional, uh, functionality in our building. It's just different now. People can uh, see the things not from the window by maybe CCTV camera or maybe something else. So it's a uh, uh, functional aspects may be different, but the essence of uh, culture, it's uh, coming job class, maybe coming uh, to the uh, party within the building, how the space uh, will change. That's very important to study before doing the uh, things. If, uh, if it's about a puja, uh, like uh, uh, how it goes, uh, because even in, in this uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, situations, we are talking about all things, uh, because we have that culture, that practice. You have to wash the hand, you have to wash the leg. Uh, so there is a, always well or something available for water uh, within the courtyard so that you can uh, clean yourself before entering, uh, entering to your house. Uh, so these are the cultures and now it changes. That's why we don't have any tap outside the building. Uh, but if that culture remains, then the function remains. Uh, these are, uh, are the part we need to uh, understand, we need to go through and uh, we need to change accordingly. And about the insulations and uh, these things, yes, of course, people, uh, some people who really want to do uh, as a sustainable part, uh, we can have a cavity wall, uh, we can uh, uh, have a another, uh, lot of solutions, which we can use it now also. But you have to make a good marketing, you have to deal with the client and you have to uh, clear before implementation so that client can use it. Otherwise, it's very hard job. Thank you, sir. Uh, pursuing bachelor's degree from Bangladesh, how hard it was for you to start practice in Nepal? Uh, yes, it's uh, somewhere it's very hard uh, for me is not about the practicing itself, but uh, knowing what's happening, who are other architects, who are other people uh, who is the, doing the practice, that's a very tough job for me uh, because I don't know anyone. Uh, that's why the better part of uh, uh, my study uh, period is that we have two months holiday and I come here. That's why I start from 1996, I started practicing every uh, wherever I got the chance, I just go for the intern. That's a good part of myself being involved so that I know few people uh, here in architecture practice. Otherwise, it's a totally blind. We don't know anything, what's happening, uh, where is the offices, who are the consultant, nothing. It's a totally zero. That's the hardest part for me. Uh, but fortunately, uh, I got some uh, good work I introduced, uh, actually, I was introduced with Eric before I went for study. So come, coming back, I can talk with him and he uh, uh, involved me in his work. So I got the opportunity in that way. After that, uh, I started uh, try to join Sona. Uh, that's where the platform I got and I connected with all the other peoples. And uh, as my hobby or as my interest, I uh, uh, start teaching also. That's uh, give me a platform. Otherwise, uh, I will be lost. I I was nowhere uh, after coming back from my graduation because I don't know anyone. That's a total loss. Studying outside. Okay, we have something related to the uh, teaching mm -hmm. as well. Academically, I have experienced most of the teacher try to teach the student their philosophy. Student will lead the students to come up with their philosophy and the new concepts to be themselves and create their identity. So what do you suggest to the architecture professionals involved academically? No, uh, for me, I'm a guide for the students. I'm not the 
uh, one uh, who implement uh, my ideas because guy never implement his ideas. He just give the uh, proper uh, guidelines only. Uh, yes, sometimes uh, what happens, it's uh, the project maybe going in wrong directions. In that case, okay, you are in wrong directions, you have to review all the parts. That's very important. Otherwise it's just guiding uh, and following the design process. That's what I'm teaching all the time. Design process is much more important than the all ideas. If you know how to design, then you can design uh, traditional architecture, modern architecture, doesn't matter. Uh, or any kind of uh, concept doesn't matter if you are in right design process. Otherwise, uh, design, uh, uh, designing and guiding, okay, you do big windows, you do small windows, or you have to make axis or symmetry. These are not the uh, things. And I think I did in that way while I'm teaching. I'm trying to uh, correct them. I'm trying to define all the correct aspects so that they can learn within what they did. And I like to suggest most probably everyone knows they are doing the same things and they are trying to uh, teach them the design process. But the important things students should know about these are we teachers are good clients, but in professional practice, clients are not good. That students should know because we know what they are doing. We know uh, what architecture is, but the client are not. So uh, that's I got benefit when I practice uh, as an intern uh, in my student period, because one of the client is very hard. They are doctors, and I forget all the names. And I did very uh, good design uh, in that period, but I cannot convince them. And same design, my senior told the uh, same things and they are convinced. That's the uh, uh, how the client see us and how uh, we are uh, 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 adopted by the client, basically. So it's uh, about the time period, it's a maturity or it's about the confidence, all uh, is important and client is not uh, knowing all the things. So it's a teacher are always good client. And if uh, you can uh, make a good uh, design process, it's always solved. And teacher knows, most, uh, most of the case teacher knows the design process rather than the philosophy. Okay. Uh, Kahmandu is high seismic prone zone. And most of your design has so many elements as an aesthetic part. Aren't these elements uh, be vulnerable during earthquake? Uh, design seems interesting though. Structure is always the base of the architecture. So uh, if you have a good structure designers, then that's never a, a vulnerable part. Uh, and even, uh, I don't know, uh, if you go, just I try to relate with the architecture part, our uh, temples roof are projected even 10 feet outside the main core area. And here I have a lesson that three feet can deliver is more than if, uh, enough. If five feet is vulnerable, that's not the thing uh, actually. It should be a properly designed, then uh, whatever you want, you can project uh, because uh, technology is more vast and uh, just we have to go through technology with the understanding of what it is. So there is no vulnerable if you follow the, all the process that needed. You don't have to worry for that. But that's why the civil part is there in architecture. So you have to at least learn the thumbs rule. You have to learn the, uh, uh, when you are designing the things, you just don't design it as an art. You design is art and science. Then there's no problems. And uh, when I'm doing my project, I always, uh, check the structure part of the, my building also, how I can develop the structure part and how it can be stand. Uh, because uh, it's, uh, we are not designing like a balloon. It, it's, uh, there is art and we have to put it in art. So it's not that hard job. Uh, okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we will take one more question. Uh, traditional architecture has a timeless beauty to it. Even if we look it after uh, more than 50 years, uh, we will still be fascinated by it and it never gets old. But fusing the modern architecture, which is a 
complete different principles with traditional architecture. What do you think its impact will be in a long-term basis? Do you think this style of architecture uh, will go on for years and years? Uh, basically, what I'm trying uh, is go with the time, not with uh, what it is. Recreating the traditional part is true, as uh, uh, you have mentioned, that it once it builds, it remains, even in 50 years, it looks like just yesterday. Uh, because that's what we accept already. But what we are now trying to do is how the things should be developed. Uh, 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 because even if the father uh, is doing the craft, son is doing the craft, and the grandson is doing the craft, the thing is same, but the process will be different now. Because uh, uh, my seniors just draw the sketches. They never use computer. I'm using sketches and I'm using computer. Maybe the next generation just use the computer, but the result is same, but the doing thing is same. So it changes. It's, we cannot, uh, if we stopped uh, doing changes, then it becomes the, uh, again, totally traditional part and it not goes with the time. It uh, remains as a, one traditional styles and we go for now uh, with the new styles. That's the changes. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we have to go with the changes so that it uh, always remain fresh with the process rather than the certain styles. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, with this, we have come to the end of the webcast series. Uh, before we wrap up the episode, I would like to ask Fadil, uh, sir, if he has any advices for young architects and students. Yes, for the young architect and students, uh, basically, I uh, would like to start from the students. For students, uh, always try to satisfy yourself first when doing the designs, uh, because uh, after all, uh, when uh, you go to the professionals, uh, you cannot have a teacher then. You, you will have a client. And then it's a very uh, important to satisfy yourself. Otherwise, slowly what happens if you just follow the uh, client, either you go to the business, uh, then architecture, or you left the architecture because uh, you are not doing for anything for yourself. And uh, that's what architecture is not. Uh, you have to satisfy yourself first. Uh, maybe sometimes in the practicing, it goes poor marks or sometimes it goes high mark. Uh, otherwise, the new things will not create. If you follow the same system, so same old things and uh, uh, same uh, patterns. Because even my passion is modern architecture. I'm trying to understand the realization of myself uh, so that I am giving more time uh, to develop something new that even I don't know now actually uh, what is the right answers, but I'm trying myself uh, to do uh, these new uh, ideas. Uh, so uh, for a student, just go for new ideas, uh, try to uh, follow the design process, try to understand how to finish the projects. That's very important because there is a timeline always. And if you don't finish the project, you don't know actually what you are doing. That's very important. Uh, uh, to the students and for the young architect, uh, for a certain uh, period of time, I would like to suggest them jump for their own uh, job. Uh, try to follow some architect, try to understand the process, totally process, uh, uh, two years, three years, uh, five years, and start your own uh, uh, work. Then after, or you can even work on team if you want to work in a big projects because uh, uh, in big projects, if you want to handle that big project, you have to know the all details of the process to handle that big project. So it's very important uh, to have some uh, good knowledge of another aspect that's left uh, behind the educations, like dealing with the client, uh, dealing with the uh, money, dealing with the uh, site, dealing with the contractor, dealing with the supervisor, and checking with the site, all this comes on your uh, uh, job. And even if you open your own office, it's a management, tax, and uh, there are a lot of other things also. So uh, it's very important uh, to work in a team, to understand the 
uh, consultancy process to understand other part of the uh, things that you did not uh, practice in your education. So it's very important to learn all these things, make a team, uh, try to uh, uh, work at least two, three years in different offices uh, first and make a team and you can work together or otherwise even uh, you can make a team within uh, your office also so that you can lead the projects. Uh, but the first uh, important part is I'm telling to the all professional practice is CAP cap. You have to wear a cap. Cap means the uh, C for the communications. You need good communications. You need good attitude and you need professionalism. So if you follow the CAP, it's all opening to you. Uh, if you are not following the communications, you cannot put your ideas. If you have not good attitude for what you are doing, change the, uh, what is your interest because attitudes come with the interest. Uh, if you are good in a supervision, then you can supervise, you don't have to design. If you are good in a uh, computer, then uh, use computer skill knowledge. You don't have to uh, go to the side. So you should communicate and you should show your interest with the attitude. And professionalism is about the responsibility, about the uh, even discipline, uh, about uh, all you follow uh, that uh, make you professionals. So this CAP is more, more important to understand for the young architect. Race is in your hand, you can play with it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Indeed, I hope everyone follows that cap rule of yours. Uh, that's uh, very uh, interesting. Uh, then on behalf of Sona, I would like to thank you for sharing your experience and knowledge with us. And I would also like to thank all of our participants for staying us till the end and making this session very interactive and interesting. And hope we have the same participation in our next webcast series, Architect Speaks Fourteenth on June 13, Friday, by professional and social responsibilities of architects in the new normal. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Stay safe, stay positive. Namaste. Goodbye. Namaste.